Alex Garland has certainly become a polarizing filmmaker within the last few years. My taste in his movies range from, I absolutely love this, to, I never want to hear about this shit ever again. Regardless of how you feel, A24 seems to want to stay in the Alex Garland business, despite his inability to bring in a faithful audience up until this point. I'll start by saying that Ex Machina is obviously the film I love the most. Heady sci-fi, beautiful cinematography. Alicia Vikander? I mean, what's not to love? The film barely broke even for A24, and it was criminally underappreciated at the box office, making only $37 million on a $15 million budget. Next was Annihilation, and it was a big swing for Paramount. I have not revisited this since I saw it in theaters, but I felt that the premise was the only great thing about it. The characters were very thin, and I hated the ending. It was also not profitable. A24 took them right back, gave them half the budget of Ex Machina, and out came men. I was was foaming out the mouth when I walked out of this theater experience. I thought the ending of that film was masturbatory at best, and whatever point Garland wanted to make with that film was not felt, seen, or heard. Luckily, it didn't make any money, so I hope we never see anything like that again. Civil War is A24's biggest gamble, and it looks like it's going to pay off based on early audience reactions. It has a strong 83% on Rotten Tomatoes during its debut weekend, and will hopefully keep some momentum through April before the blockbusters take over in May. When the trailer dropped, I knew I could let go of my anger for men. For the first time since Ex Machina, I was given a premise that I absolutely fell in love with. The title and trailer had an unrestful attitude that I could only assume made people uncomfortable, but I knew I hadn't seen a movie quite like this before. I didn't know what the film's politics were, what the intricacies of the story were. I was simply curious what a British filmmaker saw in a near future political landscape for us here in America. I expected action, thrills, and again, unrest. I think this movie will be successful, but it will divide audiences. I don't think it's quite what you expect from the trailers, and most people I think will expect more action. There's definitely some, but it's more of a road movie. Civil War is mostly interested in wartime photojournalism, not the politics or the fighting of the war itself. It doesn't dive into the what's, the who's, the why's. And that's by design. It's intentionally vague, and you can lock in once you accept that. Remember Top Gun Maverick? But Maverick had a great story, character, and action. Civil War is led by a great Kirsten Dunst performance, but we have very thin characters in this movie. The character of Jessie serves the audience the most. We can relate to her as she's inspired by Kirsten Dunst's character, and she's the rookie on the team, so we see the movie mostly through her eyes. Dunst plays the more battle-hardened journalist, Wagner Mora is a thrill-seeking journalist, and Stephen McKinley Henderson plays the wise old man. There you go. I just did all of the character work for you in a paragraph. I suppose that the vagueness of the plot allows us to not get distracted by our own political leanings. I didn't particularly care if it went a certain way, if it felt like it needed to explore a certain idea. I just wanted a good movie that had a unifying message somewhere inside. And I'm not sure we have it here. It doesn't seem to have any ideas at all. It's unrestful because the characters find themselves in unexpected and violent situations that we cannot mostly fathom but not because we recognize ourselves in the movie. I mean, people were already questioning why Texas and California would team up and join forces. The movie doesn't even explain it or anything else in the landscape. And I can only assume Garland teamed up the two states that would love to recede from the U.S. the most, though they have hardly anything in common. That specific concept isn't worth harping on too much, but I believe it's a small detail that represents the bigger idea and that I'm just not sure I understand what the point is here. I was locked in due to its intensity. I thought Dunst was great, and I, of course, always want to see Jesse Plemons asking the hard questions. What kind of American are you? See who's doing it. Three for one. How can that be profitable for Frito Lay? Are movies like this good for movies? Absolutely. I love talking to my friends about things like this. But I will not be surprised at all if I bump into somebody that thought this movie was terrible. This is my second favorite Garland film, officially, and it was an easy distinction to make considering the rest of his resume. I'm mainly nailing this film for not living up to its potential. At least the intensity came through in my Cinemark XD theater. Guys, I hope you enjoy videos like this. I've rebooted my channel recently, and I like doing these easy, breezy film reviews. So if you keep up the views, I will keep up the work. I don't know when I'm going to the theater next. I was a little intrigued by the upcoming Guy Ritchie film, but I don't think it's getting great reviews, so every day that goes by, I become more intrigued by The Fall Guy, so that might be the next theatrical run I make here in a few weeks. Until then, I am hard at work behind the scenes on some upcoming watch-alongs for the channel. I am not ready to make an announcement yet, but you will hear from me soon. 
Let me know down in the comment section below what you think of Civil War, and I will talk to you then.